Alright, so starting off, we have the EXP GDC dock itself, sporting a very familiar PCIe X16 lane on the top, for of course, a GPU. To the bottom left, there is a CTD and PTD mode switch for solving hardware conflicts that are typically found with this dock. On the front of the device, we have the data line interface, used for connecting your laptop to the dock. Following that, we have a USB plug, a DC power inject, and an 8-pin power plug for connecting the 4-pin and the 24-pin off of your power supply. The side has a 6-pin power plug used for powering a GPU. However, in this video, I'll be using the plugs on the card itself, opposed to the dock. Sent with the dock itself, this is a cable used to connect the 24-pin connector and the 4-pin CPU connector into the dock. The data line cable is essentially just a mini PCIe to HDMI cable used for transferring data from the dock to your laptop. Go figure. The laptop I will be using in this video is a Dell XPS L501X. It needs to be understood that every laptop is going to be different from the last one when it comes to using this dock. The way I could do it here could be very different from the way that you will be doing yours. The laptop is sporting a first gen i5 and a 420M. Anyhow, after removing the plate on the bottom of the laptop, which was shown in the last clip, I'm left with a fairly easy process. All that I need to do now is disconnect and remove the WLAN chip from the mini PCIe slot, insert the data cable, screw in the data cable, and connect it again to the dock. Some of you may be curious as to why I didn't use the WWAN slot. That's because it wouldn't work. Once again, it varies heavily per laptop. Now, some of you may be wondering what happens to my connection to the internet. A simple USB wireless adapter onto the dock itself will correct that issue. Now of course, we have the power supply. The manual suggests using a Dell 220 watt power supply, however, I didn't have one, nor do I think it would have been powerful enough. Instead, I went overkill, using a 750 watt Dell power supply yanked from an older computer. It has a 24 pin connector, one 8 pin CPU connector, and two 6 pin PCIe plugs, which is all more than enough. From there, it's as simple as connecting everything to where it needs to go. Remember, I'm using the 6 pin plug from my PSU into the GPU. Now plugging my 6-pin directly into the dock.
So, with everything plugged in and working, it's as simple as installing the drivers for the cards you need, and disabling any other drivers that may interfere. In my case, a 420M driver, and installing a GTX 650 Ti boost driver. If you're having any issues with your laptop and graphics card, I would honestly suggest googling what the problem is. There's no one quick fix for everything, because it's so different for a laptop. Now, I tried to do this for quite a while without an external monitor, however, I just couldn't solve the issue. Not sure if it's my laptop, or if you can't do this without an external monitor, but I think you may need one. So instead, I opted to use my 1080p monitor to see what kind of performance we can get out of the setup on a moderately popular resolution. If anyone knows as to why I was not able to do this, please let me know in the comments section. So the first thing I chose to run was Metro Last Light's Benchmark Utility, in which case this game didn't perform so well. I was a bit all over the place in terms of FPS, however I was running the benchmark pretty high. More than positive, if you turn down the settings quite a bit, you'll get a more than playable experience. Now for Killing Floor 2, I used a high preset for this game, and it ran with no issue. In fact, I maintained an average of 70 frames per second in most areas for the most part. Definitely more than playable. Now for the Heaven benchmark, I ran this utility with the high preset, normal tessellation, and X4 anti-aliasing at 1080p. Not an optimal performance, however, I did maintain pretty close to 30 frames per second, with sometimes going way over, just depending on the scene. Alright, so to put it simply, this is not a super convenient option for everyone. The fact that it's so dependent on what kind of laptop you're using and how to properly install it may make it a bit intimidating to beginners. However, with that aside, I'd say this is a pretty cool little tool. Assuming you know what you're doing and have done it correctly, you can get some pretty nice results out of using this thing. While I didn't pay much for the dock, you could easily spend another $150 or so for a power supply and a GPU to use with this. So personally, yes. I would recommend to use this product, however, I would also suggest you practice caution, do some research before you buy, and make sure your laptop is compatible, and will work well with this product.